Number five on this list is the House of Wills, a historic mansion with a deep history and an even deeper haunting. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says it was built in 1898 by the Germania Trevernian Social Club, according to the website of the current owner, Cleveland artist Eric Freeman. By 1912, it was turned into the Hospital for Immigrants, and by 1920, it housed the Cleveland Hebrew Institute until 1938, prominent African-American entrepreneur and businessman John Walker Wills bought the property in 1942 to use as the location for his second funeral parlor. Wills died in the home in 1971, and his family sold it in 2005. The home fell into disrepair until Freeman bought it in 2010 and started the challenging work of restoring and renovating the property. Freeman said on his website that Wills is believed to be one of the many ghosts that haunt the house, and on his Facebook page, he posted a scary electronic voice phenomena, or EVP, recording from the house of what sounds like dozens of spirits from beyond trying to be heard by the living. There have actually been some famous paranormal investigators that have looked into this mansion before and they all came to the same conclusion. It's haunted. A swirling mist will occasionally appear in the mansion, followed by stark temperature changes and a horribly foreboding sensation. Visitors who've stayed at this mansion for extended periods of time say that the visit changed them. That they're sort of constantly on alert after that stay, as if they're hyper aware all of the time. Unless you're trying to feel anxious literally all of the time, I'd book another place to stay if I was you. Number four on this list is the Seely Rose House. This house is located in the Malibu our farm state park, which is in Richland County. To this day, it's still a working farm, which is kind of shocking considering the horrible tragedy that occurred here many years ago. Seely Rose is actually the name of a person, a young girl who lived in the late 1800s. This girl wasn't innocent and sweet as the stereotypical farm gal is. She was evil. There used to be a neighbor house right nearby the Seely Rose house, and in that home lived a young boy around the same age as Seely. Seely developed quite the crush on him and wanted to marry him. It seemed that he liked her as well and he wanted to do the same. This was all fine and good, except her family wouldn't allow it. Seely's family forbid her from marrying this boy, and this was what caused her to do what she did next. Seely wouldn't accept this answer and took it on herself to get rid of the problem, her family. She poisoned them. Every single one of them. She did it by soaking flypaper in water and then secretly pouring the arsenic-laced water over the cottage cheese she served them, according to Ohio State Park News. They all died soon afterwards, except for her. This was soon found out by the authorities, and Seely, being as young as she was, wasn't sent to jail, but she was put into a mental institute. She was there until she died many, many years later. This home is supposedly still haunted by her and the ghost of her dead family, though. Scratches and eerie cracks are heard throughout all the time. Many people have reported being attacked while they're here as well. Avoid this home at all costs if you find yourself in Ohio. Number three on this list is the Franklin Castle. This house is actually called the Tiedman House, but over the years and from the history it has, it's been nicknamed the Franklin Castle. News 5 Cleveland says, known as the Franklin Castle, this Victorian-style stone house has been a witness to history and withstood the development of the West Side. The stone castle carries an American horror story type history along with it. The house was built between 1881 and 1883 by a German immigrant, Hans Tiedemann. At the turn of the 19th century, Franklin Boulevard was one of the most upscale residential avenues in Cleveland. Franklin Castle was sold in 1896, just one year after his wife Louise died. In the century that followed, the house saw many new owners and new uses. Rumors began to circulate around 1986 that the house house was haunted by the ghosts of Mrs. Tiedman and her daughter Emma, who died before the house was even built. So this one is kind of strange, because it doesn't seem like anything terrible happened to these two ladies in their death, or at least nothing that I could find. Most times when a spirit haunts a place, it's because they died in a fashion that was very unnatural. That wasn't the case here, and yet they still haunt the castle. It's a nice home to look at from the outside, but definitely not a place that you should be going into. Avoid it altogether. Number two on this list is the Gore Orphanage. Anything that is named the Gore Orphanage is bound 
known to be haunted, and this is no exception. News 5 Cleveland says it's claimed to be one of the most haunted places in Ohio. Located in the countryside of Vermilion, a fire engulfed an old orphanage, burning dozens of people alive, according to long-told tales. For over a century, visitors to the Gore Orphanage have reported strange experiences of glowing lights, chilling cries, and apparitions. Light of Hope was the actual name of the orphanage and was established by Johann Sprunger and his wife Katrina. They moved to the Vermilion area after their two former businesses in Indiana also caught fire. Throughout the years, children told stories of a neglect, and slave labor conditions. In 1909, an investigation was conducted, but because the state had no laws or regulations pertaining to orphanages, nothing could formally be done to prosecute the couple. While there's no proof that any deaths actually did occur, there's still little doubt about its reputation for being one of the most haunted areas in Ohio. So, not only did this place suffer a horrible tragedy where several people passed away during a massive blaze, but prior to that even happening, there seemed to be so many huge human rights violations going on. I have no idea how back in the day the state wouldn't have had any laws pertaining to orphanages, but it just shows how back then these operations and children were so neglected. Because of all this tragedy and just general sadness, we have what stands today, a horribly haunted, abandoned old orphanage. Now this is on the list of places not to go, and that's because it is actually very dangerous to do so. The ghosts here are upset, and interacting with them will be a huge strain on your mind. However, if you are feeling strong enough, then I actually do encourage you to go. The only way these spirits will finally find peace is if they finally get the attention from the public that they deserve. Something that clearly this place didn't get while it was in operation. And finally, number one on this list is the Ohio State Reformatory. This is one of the most famous spots in all of Ohio. It got the public's attention when it was used as the filming location for the famous movie Shawshank Redemption. It also got the public's attention though when it was claimed to be one of the most haunted spots in the entire state. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says workers laid the cornerstone on what was known as the intermediate prison between the Boys Industrial School in Lancaster and the Ohio State Penitentiary in Columbus for nonviolent offenders on November 4th, 1886, according to the Mansfield News Journal. The building was used as an operational prison for 94 years until 1981, and during that time, there was a good deal of violence, death, and disease. It's not surprising in the least to find out that this place is haunted. Visitors have reported seeing shadows, hearing strange noises and conversations, and experiencing feelings of anger, dread, and sadness. In 1948, the reformatory's farm boss, his wife, and his daughter were kidnapped and killed by two enraged parolees outside the prison's walls. But the building itself is believed to be haunted by the ghost of Arthur Louis Glattac, the superintendent at the prison from 1935 until 1959, and his wife, Helen. The warden's wife died from an accidental shooting, and several years later, Later, the warden died from a heart attack, according to the Preservation Society. The couple's disembodied voices have been heard in the prison's old superintendent's office. A boy is also believed to haunt the basement, where he was reportedly beaten to death, according to the website Mysterious Heartland. So, yeah, I think it's pretty clear by all of this that this place is not the sort of spot you want to be visiting anytime soon. The amount of violence that this location would have seen is just truly abhorrent, and I'm actually surprised that they were able to get through the entire filming of the Shawshank Redemption without some serious ghostly interventions. Maybe it's because they had Morgan Freeman in the movie and, well, Let's face it, he's kind of an angel. Number five on this list is Stiver's School for the Arts. This is a high school that's attracted hundreds of artistic students from around the region for years. It's apparently a really good school, however, ever since a murder back in the 1920s, it's been deeply haunted. AGC writes, according to the online magazine Dayton Most Metro, a teacher named Mary Tyler was found dead in the pool with a locket in one hand and a broken pointer in the other. The teacher was reportedly involved with a senior student at the time of her death. He disappeared after her body was found and was never seen again. Officials believe the unnamed student tore his picture out of the teacher's locket so nobody would suspect him, according to the writer Julian Heisler. The school eventually covered over the pool, building a classroom on top of it. A trap door still leads down into the pool which is used for storage now, Heisler said, but it seems Mary Tyler never left. Students and maintenance staff have reported Tyler's ghostly figure levitating in the abandoned and pool and floating about the lower levels and the network of tunnels buried underneath the school, banging on pipes and wailing loudly wherever she goes, 
Dayton Most Metro reported. A floating dead body. Yeah, that sounds pretty haunted to me, guys. Ever since this ghostly incident, there have been tons of spooky moments reported by students. Lights flickering, temperature changes, items mysteriously moving around by themselves, and things of this nature happening regularly at this school. It's crazy that something that went down a hundred years ago still has such a hold over this place, but literally a century later, and we still haven't shaken the ghost of Mary's Hyler. Hopefully, the next century is a little bit less scary for the students at Stiver School for the Arts. Number four on this list is the Cleveland Federal Reserve. The Cleveland Federal Reserve is where the money is. Now this isn't a comment on people being haunted by crippling debt, even though that's probably the most realistic thing I've ever said on this channel. No, this place is haunted by an actual poltergeist that you don't want to mess with. Matilda is the name of our ghost in question, and she's said to haunt the vault down below. Now the good thing about this place is that you actually can't even get to the haunted area. So even for those of you who are feeling daring, you aren't going to be able to go and visit Matilda because it's off limits to the public. Matilda used to work here and was deeply involved in the stock market. That's why when the market suffered a horrible crash in 1929, Matilda felt trapped and saw no other way than to take her own life. She did so in this building and now it is forever haunted by her spirit passing through the underground walls, scaring all of those who work down there. It's hard to know how accurate this haunting really is because we don't really have any proof of it. That, however, is more due to the fact that it's super off limits and super well guarded vault that nobody can get to. If we can trust the verbal accounts of the people who've run into her, and there have been many, then we should definitely fear this vault. Number three on this list is Cry Baby Bridge. This is definitely one of the most famous spots in the state when it comes to hauntings. This one specifically is the Rogue's Hollow Crybaby Bridge and has a pretty sad and scary history. There are two legends that could be true in regards to this bridge. The first one says that the mother of a newborn child had a falling out with her lover. He abandoned her and she fell into a deep depression. She responded by throwing her newborn over the bridge and then followed that by throwing herself over as well. The second legend says that two parents of a newborn child were driving down the road. They got to the bridge, and on that bridge, their car spun out on some black ice. The car crashed into a tree right after the bridge, killing both of the parents. The baby in the back of the car survived, though, at least for a time. This road doesn't get traveled on often, and it was very cold that evening. When people eventually did come upon the crash, it was too late. Ever since this incident happened, this bridge has been rightfully avoided by the locals. The horrible sound of a baby crying can be heard echoing throughout the river that it passes over. They say that standing on this bridge for too long, it's not good for your brain or your mental state. That your sanity will slowly slip away from you and any happiness and good feelings that you may have had will be sucked away down that river for good. Not a bridge that you should want to go down at all, so avoid it altogether. Number two on this list is Squire's Castle. So calling this place a castle is a bit of a stretch, because the castle was was never actually built. News 5 Cleveland says, located in the North Chagrin Reservation of the Cleveland Metro Parks, this castle is a reflection of the builder Fergus B. Squires, who was a founding member of the Standard Oil Company. The actual castle was never built, so what it's standing on today was the shell of the gatekeeper's house for the estate. Legend has it that Fergus's wife, Rebecca, was very much a city girl who wanted nothing to do with nature. Stories say Rebecca was walking up the stone stairs when she became startled by something outside her window. In a panicked state, she dropped her lantern and tumbled to her death down the cold stone staircase. Ever since this tragedy happened, Rebecca's ghost has never left, haunting all of those who visit or stay at the estate and bemoaning her unfortunate fate. The thing is that she isn't the thing that most people are scared of. It's whatever the thing was that frightened Rebecca so much that she fell to her death. Rumor has it that there could be a werewolf-like beast roaming the estate. Dark red eyes have been seen in the night at a far, and the howls of some wolf-like creature have also been reported. Is it possible that Rebecca saw this werewolf so many years ago and that's what frightened her? Maybe she isn't trying to haunt the place at all, but actually trying to scare people away from this place so the same fate doesn't happen to them. Either way, I don't recommend going. 
And finally, number one on this list is the Lorraine Palace Theater. You know, for once, it would be really nice to go see some theater without fearing for your life. Sadly, you aren't gonna get that at the Lorraine Palace Theater. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution writes, The Lorraine Palace Theater opened in 1928 in Lorraine, Ohio, near Cleveland. It seats just over 1,700 guests and was the first movie theater in the state to show talking pictures, according to the theater's website. Dave Hensley, a paranormal researcher and the founder of EVP Mediums, told the Chronicle Telegram after investigating the palace that there are so many spirits there, he couldn't even count them all. We got a name from a gentleman named Ed who said that he worked at the shipyard. That's profound because the shipyard was directly behind the palace. He claimed that he was murdered, pushed down stairs, Henley said. There was a spirit who said that he died of drugs as well. And we had spirits that were killed in the 1924 tornado that hit Lorraine. That was pretty emotional, one of them said. My body flew, Henslet told the Chronicle. The theater's operation director told the newspaper most people in the area probably know about the ghosts and spirits that roam the palace's hallways. I think everybody in Lorraine County has been privy to the rumors of the unexplained activity in the Lorraine Palace Theater, Chris Pataki said. In fact, a documentary in the Haunted Theater called Ghosts of the Palace is scheduled to debut at the movie house this weekend. Pretty ballsy move right there guys, literally screening a movie about your haunted theater in said haunted theater. All of this though should make it very clear how haunted this place actually is. Literally everybody around this area knows about this spot. And whenever you're getting a full on movie made about how specifically haunted you are, then you know that you've made it as a haunted location. Even though most people make it out of this theater unscathed, that can't be said for everybody. Attacks have been reported and left people feeling very emotionally and even physically scarred. Netflix is a thing for a reason in now guys, let's use it. Number five on this list is Cleveland Gray's Armory Museum. This building was constructed in 1893 for the Cleveland Grays, who were a volunteer private military company. The group helped law enforcement and dealt with other criminal ongoings that attacked the city streets. They continued helping out the military for as long as the government would allow them to, but after World War I, were no longer allowed to enter as a private group. However, they obviously had a lot of weapons and things of that nature that nobody would be using anymore. So today, they're now standing stands the Cleveland Grays Armory Museum. These guns and cannons don't stand alone though, as there are ghosts living among these walls as well. Disembodied voices and things moving when they're not supposed to are all very common occurrences at the Cleveland Grays Armory Museum. The legend actually became so famous that this place was featured on Ghost Hunters, where they investigated the building and determined that this place is in fact haunted. However, luckily for us, and a reason why you still might be able to go to this place, is that that the ghosts are supposedly out there for a good time. These professionals determine that the ghosts are not fueled by anger, but just chilling out in the museum and living their best ghostly lives. Still though, there are many apparitions of military men who will appear, as well as ghostly footsteps and sounds that just don't make any sense at all. It's all very creepy, even if the ghosts are only out for fun. It would probably be a pretty cool place to check out, just make sure that you aren't faint of heart. Number four on this list is Erie Street Cemetery. This is apparently one of the spookiest places in the state and not a spot that you should want to be burying your loved ones. Only in your state writes, in 1826, this charming cemetery was established on East 9th Street, though it was known as Erie Street at the time. Before then, a community burial ground was maintained near modern day public square. Expansion, of course, eventually caught up with the cemetery and it's now right across the street from Progressive Field. This growth once threatened the cemetery's existence as bodies were removed from the cemetery in the early 1900s to make space for the new development. This this preparation was shut down when the Pioneers Memorial Association was founded, so the burial grounds remains, yet it now feels oddly out of place. Perhaps one of the most unforgettable stories is that of Jock Osot, also known as Walking Bear. Jock Osot was the proud chief of the Meske Kai, a tribe that existed in Iowa. Following the conclusion of the Black Hawk War, Jock Osot came out east to hunt. He made the acquaintance of Dan Marvel and joined his theater troupe, traveled to England, and even came into the favor of Queen Victoria. However, he fell ill and parted ways with the troop. Legend maintains that Jock Osot was making his way home to his ancestral lands, anticipating his demise, but that he passed in Cleveland before he reached his intended destination. As a result, local myth maintains Jock Osot remains eternally restless. His local friends like Dr. Horace Ackley
family arranged for his burial in Erie Street Cemetery. His dismay at being unable to return home caused him to crack his stone grave marker. This ghost has been spotted so many times and haunts those who pass by here. He's even said to haunt the Cleveland Guardians baseball park which is just across the street from this cemetery. His ghost is forever restless and just wants to get home but I'm not sure that he ever will though. Number 3 on this list is South Bass Island Lighthouse. Located in South Bass Island on Lake Erie, this lighthouse and the island it's on is honestly rather beautiful. Super cute and super quaint, it's kind of like the place that you'd want to go for a day trip with your significant other. However, you may not want to take said significant other to the South Bass Lighthouse itself. It housed lighthouse keepers in the late 1800s. The weirdness began back in 1898 with Harry Riley the lighthouse keeper and his assistant Sam Anderson. Anderson was a bit of a weirdo. He was said to have captured snakes on the island and then bring them to the basement of the lighthouse where he kept a bunch of them. Anderson apparently lost his mind though during the time that he worked at this place. Apparently there was a small epidemic and he freaked out at the prospect of having to stay in quarantine. Triggering a little bit? It's thought that he took his own life by jumping off of the cliff portion of the island. Then later on, the lighthouse keeper Harry was found hopelessly mad running around the island like a lunatic. It was the two stories of these men that launched the legends of a haunting at this lighthouse. People are very scared of the lighthouse as they believe it to be haunted with some sort of demon that will make you go insane. A lovely and quaint little spot, but one that if you spend too much time at will literally have you lose your mind. Not to mention the ghosts of these two men have been spotted from time to time running around frantically looking as if all their wits are totally gone. Number 2 on this list is Edwin Shaw Hospital. Edwin Shaw Hospital has truly seen it all and it's no wonder that it's deeply haunted today. It initially opened in 1915 as a hospital specifically for tuberculosis. Then a few years later a side wing opened up to care for pediatric patients. Needless to say, during these periods there was a lot of death that took place. Then in 1947 things changed drastically and became a place for abandoned children, those who lost their parents or those who suffered. For the next few years of this place's operation, there were a decent amount of scandals that took place. Tons of reports of mistreatment of these children, with some patients even taking their own lives during this time. Eventually, this became a psychiatric hospital as well, and as you can probably imagine, it saw its fair share of human rights violations and scary things. Now, this place is no more, it's completely demolished, but the area is still deeply haunted. Ohio Exploration went prior to its demolition in 2017 and saw its haunted nature firsthand. They write, Of course, with such a rich and diverse history, it is no surprise that Edwin Shaw was said to be haunted. The spirits of not only the tuberculosis victims, there are 246 buried in the hospital cemetery, but also of those children who took their own lives and those who fell victim to ill fates were said to haunt the hospital and its grounds. Doors opened and closed by themselves and sounds of spectral foot footsteps were often heard in the halls. The sounds of a meal being served in the mess hall were heard quite frequently, but upon inspection, the hall was completely empty. Ghostly humming and other odd sounds were heard in Sunshine Village, where the bulk of the paranormal activity was said to take place. Be very careful guys of this place in Ohio. Number 1 on this list is Moonville Tunnel. Moonville Tunnel is a deeply haunted tunnel in Ohio that locals are perpetually afraid of. Jim Reed says, According to local legend, the ghost is that of a railroad worker who was crushed by an oncoming train in the spring of 1859. The newspaper article from the MacArthur Democrat dated March 31st, 1859 reads, A brakesman was fatally injured when the wheels passing over and grinding to a shapeless mass the greater part of one of his legs. Talk about graphic. Most who claim to have sighted the ghost of Moonville Tunnel say that he carries a lantern and is sometimes seen as a hovering or orb of light. At least four other people were reported to have been killed at Moonville Tunnel as well, although the details, they kind of vary. Some legends claim that Moonville was struck by a plague and quarantine and that the ghosts are of those killed by the epidemic. Others state that the ghost is that of a pregnant woman struck by a train, and still others claim that it was an 8 foot tall man who was struck. However, none of these legends are quite as popular as the initial one. This tunnel appears on tons of the most haunted Ohio lists, and it even has a pretty massive section on Wikipedia dedicated to how haunted it is. That can't be said for most other places, and just kind of leads to the legitimacy of these ghosts. On the Wikipedia page, there are also extensive stories about the Lavender Lady, the Engineer, and the Bully, who were all apparently characters that died due to this train many years ago. 
As Jim Reed mentioned earlier though, these are lesser legends but still could have actually happened. Whatever or whoever is truly haunting this tunnel, it's clear that it probably isn't safe for us to be exploring. Avoid the Moonwheel Tunnel at all costs. Unless you're in a train, in that case, because considering how our ghosts became ghosts, you might actually be safe.